okay, thank you. Okay, how many of you have heard or used uh, Next.js before this talk? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I apologize for the next uh, talk because uh, people who don't know Next maybe not will understand, but I will try to do my best. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the full static generation. Uh, so, just about me, I'm Alexander Chopin, co-creator of Next.js. The other creator is my little brother, Sebastian. You can find me on Twitter with uh, the name I am Next. Okay, it seems like uh, pretentious, but um, that's the only name I found it available. Um, so, why Next.js? Uh, I think you have heard uh, Vanessa and Samuel. Uh, they talk to you about they use Next because they, it saves a lot of time for developers. Uh, I'm going to explain more about it because uh, we created this project three years ago when we have to create uh, e-commerce websites and we would like to server render it. So we would like to transform a backbone GS website, server render with Node.js into a Vue.js app. So when Vue 2 was launched in September 2016, uh, the server renders was not documented at all. So when we found a solution to create with this website with the server rendered part, we start to create this boilerplate, kind of boilerplate script, when you can start to create your app, as you do like a single page app, but it's going to be server rendered. And you don't have a configuration to do nothing at all. Then. Uh, we also decide as the structure of your app is, as a web app, you define the router. So every route, for example, slash about, you want to server render it. So if you server render it in every stack, you get the HTML with your data. It's the same with Node.js. So if you get the HTML, you can create the .html file. So at the end, you can create a static website generator at the end. So that's how we decide to create this project when with the same code base, you can decide to create a single page app or a universal web application. So two modes, ASPA or universal. But you can also decide which target you want. If you need a server, you can server render your app. But if you don't need a server because it's a static website and you don't very change your data very often, like a blog post or your personal website, you can also decide to static generate your website. Because it's the same at the end. If you decide to render routes, you can render with the server or you can generate a static file. So I'm going to explain the two different mods we get. You get the single page application. So of course you get the request from the browser. Every know, everybody knows about that. So it can be a CDN index.html file. So it comes back with this file with no data inside because it, it's a single page app. So it's completely empty. You just have this div ID app. And then you do the API call. So during this time, you get this fucking loader. And then the API, you give back the response and then the user got the full website. And then, like I told you three years ago with Vue 2, you get the server render. So it comes with universal application. So still the request. Then, instead to come back to the browser, the server calls the API. You get the data back to the server. And then you come back to the browser with the HTML completed with your data. And then you just navigate through the client. Okay? So it's same as the ASPA, except for the first call, it's server render. Well, with this in mind, with these two modes, you can decide if you need a server or not. So you get two different deployment solutions. Choose a server or to choose a static generation. That's how it is. When we start to think about it, it's like, okay, so some website needs to be dynamic, so we need a server. Some of us, the client change not very often the content, so it's going to be static. So with the same code base, I repeat it, but you can choose ASPA, universal, or server static. So dynamic versus static. How many of you 
have used a Jamstack solution. I mean, like Jekyll, Exo, whatever. How many of you? Personal websites, enterprise, no matters. OK, that's good. Why? Why do you use that? Of course, there is one point, it's security. No server, no database means no security issue because it's all static. The second one is performance. Because if it's static, you can cache it, you can put it on CDN. And nothing but the less, the cost. No server, no cost. It's almost pretty free. Netlify is free, get to page is free, search is free. As a personal website or for a customers, as a freelancer, it's awesome. You can invoice the customers, but it costs nothing for you except the, the domain name, maybe. So in Next, you get the possibility to use both. So you can use NPM run start if you want to use a server, or you can generate it with NPM run generate. So same code base, multiple, multiple targets. The point is with Next, we try to be focused not on clients, but on developers. We want to improve your developer experience. So if one day your customers or your clients want to add some functionalities and you need to add a database or functionality with a server, you keep the same code base. You just switch the command line, and that's all. So let's be focused on static generated because we are on the Jamstack session, right? So on the SPA mod, OK, I'll stop moving now. We got only one file generated because it's SPA, single page application. So only one file will be rendered, the index.html file. But still, we got this issue. Could be an issue, but it could be not an issue, depending on your use case. It's an empty HTML file who's going to be generated. So if you create an admin panel, you don't need SEO at all. That's fine. That's fine because you don't need to pre-render your files. So SPR mode can be fine for you. And you have to, of course, disable the fallback because you don't need it. It's only an admin file or something you don't want to be ref referred on Google. And we got the second mod, as explained, the universal mod. So every route you decide to create is going to be generated as HTML file. That means you're going to keep the SEO OK. I say OK because it's not going to be perfect, and I'm going to explain why. Every file is going to be generated, even if it's a dynamic parameters inside your route. But for that, you have to define your d dynamic parents. That means if you get a root, let's say a slash slug, you have to define into Next the config. You have to define every different parameters values. So it can be total, title, let's say everything. So you have to know every possibility of your slugs params. Every file is going to be pre rendered. So every HTML file file pre-render going to have the state at the moment you build your website. So if your data change with the time and you don't re-render this website, you're going to have a mismatch. So we get more possibility, but that's the current status with Next after three, yeah, three years working on it. But to be honest, we were working more about server-side rendering because the Jamstack was not so famous at this time. But now, I'm going to talk to you about this new full static generation we are working on and going to be launched soon. So it's secret. OK, sorry. So still in mind, you, we want to improve your DX developer experience and also our developer experience. So keep in mind, we want less configuration more performance. So as we can know, you know, with you, you define the router link. With Next, we create this component called Next link. We improve these components, and it allows us, every time we generate a route, 
to detect every different value for dynamic parents. That means you don't have to config your dynamic params anymore. So we can automatically generate every file depending on the value. So no more configuration. If your user got 1,000 different ID, we're going to find it with your links. We can also avoid your API call on the client side, because when you generate your HTML file, of course you get the pre-render data at the time you generate it, but you still get an SPA on the front. So you still get this API call fetching your API and your data. So if your API changing value and you didn't generate again your website, you get a mismatch between the two. So generate file, static value, and your API was a new value, and you forgot to regenerate your website. With this, web, this new static generation, we're going to cache your API call, so you're not going to call again your API, and we're going to fetch it into your JSON file. So it's like the so next GS API module you have seen with Matthew, kind of, because we're going to cut the API call, we're going to import this file, and then that means you are with the offline support by default. Nothing to do, just continue to develop your application with the .view files. And more and more, we're going to work also on, sometimes you want to re-render or regenerate only one root and not the entire application, so the team is still working on it, and it's going to be launched very soon. So um, I'm going to be very brief because it's time is off since a lot of time. So if you want to see a nice example, guess what? You can see it because our website is already done with these features. So check out on GitHub or nuxgs.org repository. You can find the module. And this module called Crawler and Static is going to be inside the core soon. And you can already use it in your repo. So it was pretty fast. I'm really happy to talk in Austria for the first time. I wasn't so prepared so much, but uh, thank you for your attention and uh, talk to you later. Thank you.